Have you been to a petrol pump recently and noticed something different? Or perhaps you have been wondering why your car's mileage isn't quite what it used to be? You're not alone. Today we are diving deep into India's E20 petrol policy, a massive shift in our fuels landscape that's impacting millions of drivers, their vehicles and their pockets. We are going to break down the full story from how this policy started, its goals and what the government claims are its benefits to the real world impact on your car, on your wallet and how India's approach stacks up against other countries. We'll also look at some criticisms and ask, could we have done this better? So buckle up. By the end of this video, you'll have a thorough understanding of India's E20 story. Let's get started. This is where the rubber meets the ground or in your case, your engine meets the fuel. While the government celebrates reaching its targets, many Indian consumers are voicing against the actual impact of E20 fuel. Let's talk about mileage first. It's the most common complaint. According to the 2021 Niti Aayog report, the government itself admits that E20 fuel can cause a drop in fuel efficiency, stating it could be 1 to 2% for E20 compliance cars and 3 to 6% for older vehicles. However, ask most drivers, you'll hear a different story. According to Deccan Herald and other news outlets, many car owners are reporting a much more significant drop, sometimes even 15 to 20%. Now, let's address your car's health. For vehicles manufactured after April 2023, you are generally good. Automakers have been mandated to produce E20 compliant vehicles. But for millions of vehicles produced before April 2023, there is a significant risk. As noted by the Hindu, automakers like Hero Motor Corp and TVS Motors have issued advisories regarding their older vehicles needing modifications. Why? Ethanol can corrode rubber seals, gaskets and plastic parts not designed for it. The Automotive Research Association of India stated in their reports that there is no such adverse impact, but they haven't made their detailed report public leading to questions about transparency. The biggest issue here is the lack of choice. As reported by the News Minute, the consumers here don't have a choice to go for an ethanol-free option. This puts the burden squarely on owners of older vehicles who risk long-term damage and higher maintenance costs. Even the Supreme Court, which dismissed a PIL challenging the policy, did not mandate an ethanol-free option. Finally, let's talk about your pocket. With lower mileage, you're burning more fuel to cover the same distance. According to the 2021 Niti Aayog's report, they recommended the price of E20 to be lower than that of regular petrol to compensate consumers. The recommendation was not followed as E20 is sold at almost the same price. This means the saving that government claims in the crude oil imports are not being passed to the end consumer. So India isn't the first country to adopt higher ethanol blends. So let's look at how they approached it and what could have India potentially learned. Take Brazil for instance, often cited as a global leader in ethanol use. Their success was built on widespread adoption of flex fuel vehicles which can run on any blend of petrol and ethanol. Crucially, they ensured a clear pricing advantage for ethanol, making it visibly cheaper than pure petrol. This incentivized consumers to choose the greener option, aligning economic benefits and environmental goals. Then there is European approach. Countries like France and Germany introduced E10 but maintained the option of E5, giving consumers a choice, especially for owners of older vehicles who might have concerns. They prioritize consumer choice and clear labeling. So where did India's execution fall short? Many critiques point a few key areas. First, lack of choice. Unlike Brazil or Europe, India opted for an almost mandatory rollout of E20 without consistently providing a lower blend option for older vehicles. Second, no price incentive. As we mentioned, the government did not follow the Niti Aayog recommendation to lower the price of E20 to offset mileage loss. Third, communication gap. While the government highlights the benefits, there's been a perceived lack of communication and solutions for the real concerns of consumers. In a survey by The Logical Indian, nearly two-thirds of the consumers expressed dissatisfaction. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari has also been quoted in The Times of India dismissing the claims of Indian damage as propaganda. So, to sum it up, India's E20 policy is a monumental step towards energy independence and environmental goals. And achieving the target ahead of schedule is undoubtedly an accomplishment. However, the implementation has left many consumers feeling overlooked. The goal of reducing imports and emissions is critical, but a successful transition often hinges on bringing all stakeholders, especially the common consumers along. Providing choices, offering financial incentives and transparently addressing concerns as seen in other countries could have paved a smoother road for India's green fuel revolution. What are your thoughts on E20 fuel? Have you noticed a difference in your vehicle's performance or mileage? Share your experiences in the comments below, we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more in-depth analysis and hit the bell icon so you don't miss our next upload. Thanks for watching.